Hello everyone, in today's tutorial I'm going to look at another sensor for proximity sensing. I've already talked about other sensors for sensing proximity and the most common ones are the PIR sensor which senses change in ambient infrared radiation caused by a warm body entering the monitored area and another one is the ultrasonic sensor which uses reflected ultrasonic beams to detect objects. In this tutorial, I'm going to focus on the RCWL0516 microwave radar sensor, which uses Doppler radar to sense presence of an object in its range of detection. Therefore, before looking at this sensor in detail, let me first talk briefly about the Doppler effect. The Doppler effect explains the apparent change in frequency of a wave caused by relative motion between the source of the wave and an observer. The best example for Doppler effect is the sound of an ambulance siren. Whenever the ambulance is moving towards the stationary observer, the frequency of the sound waves increases and the sound will be heard with a higher pitch. And once the ambulance passes and is moving away from the observer, the frequency of the sound waves decreases and the sound is lower in pitch. So that is the basic principle of the Doppler effect. And that is the one that is being used with this RCWL0516 microwave radar sensor. So this is the sensor I'm talking about. This is an active sensor and has an built oscillator that generates a microwave signal at a frequency of about 3.18 GHz and this signal is sent out in a 360 degree pattern and the sensor measures the reflected signal. If the frequency of the reflected signal is different from that of the original signal, the sensor will know that an object has entered this range of detection and therefore it will trigger an output. Let's now have a closer look at the sensor I'm talking about here. So this is the RCWL0516 microwave radar sensor. And of course, this is the main chip. This is the RCWL9196 Doppler radar IC. And this is the power amplifier for the IC. And this amplifier is connected to an onboard antenna, uh, which is this one here at the back. The sensor has five pins here. The first pin is the 3.3 output pin. It's not a power supply pin, this is a, a 3.3 volts power output pin because the sensor has a 3.3 volts regulator and this pin can be used to power an external logic circuit. The next one is the ground pin, then this one is the output pin which goes high whenever the sensor is triggered. Then next we have the power input. The sensor can work from 4 to 28 volts power supply but most of the examples I'm going to be giving here I'll be using 5 volts. Then lastly, we have the CDS, and this is where we connect the light-dependent resistor. We can either connect the light-dependent resistor here, or we can connect on these other points here. As you can see, there is a, a label for CDS. As you can see, this other one here, I've connected the light-dependent resistor on these other two ports here. Light-dependent resistors are not polarity sensitive, so you can connect these pins on any of these other two ports here. But in case you are going to connect it uh, below here, on this other pin with the CDS here, you connect one of the pins of the independent resistor on this pin and the other pin you connect it to the ground. Then also at the back, there are other solderable jumper pins here. This side, this is uh, labeled CTM. This is for adjusting the repeat trigger time by placing a suitable SMD capacitor. Normally, the, the default trigger time is 2 seconds. So that means that whenever the sensor detects movement, it will be triggered, the output will be triggered for two seconds and then it goes off. This other jumper labeled RGN is for adjusting a detection range. So the default detection range is seven meters, but you can adjust that range by placing a suitable resistor. And the last one here, this is the RCDS, is for adjusting light, the light intensity for triggering the light dependent resistor. You also put a suitable resistor there so that you can be able to adjust the sensitivity of the light dependent resistor. These sensors can work on their own or they can be used in connection with a microcontroller. So let me first show you a simple demonstration of how we can use this sensor without using a microcontroller. So you can simply just connect this sensor to an LED so that whenever the sensor is triggered, the LED will light. The setup is rather simple. We are just going to connect this LED the output pin of the sensor via a 220 ohm current limiting resistor. Then we shall connect the DCC to 5 volts and the ground. Now let's switch on our power supply and we see. The power supply is now on and as you can see, if I move my finger closer to the sensor, the LED is going to light and then goes off after 2 to 3 seconds. Like that. If I turn it to the other side, the same thing happens. 
So that is the basic working of the sensor. Now I'm going to use this other sensor where I've attached a light dependent resistor here so that I can also see how it's going to be working. I've now put the other sensor with the light dependent resistor. I've turned on the power supply and as you can see if I bring my finger close to the sensor nothing happens. So now let me put off the light and then I try again and see. Okay now I've switched off the light. Let me now move my finger closer to the sensor. So you see the LED turns on and then after a few seconds turns off. Again, this is very applicable for detection of intruders in a dark room or during night time. So that's the basic working of the LCWL0516 microwave radar sensor. You can replace the LED with any other device or you can even put a relay to be able to control other high power devices that can be triggered by a sensor. From there, let me have another look at how we can be able to use this sensor with Arduino. In the first example is where I was using this sensor only with an LED. Whenever the sensor was triggered, the LED could go on and then turns off after 2 to 3 seconds. However, for a more practical application, it would be better if the LED remains on until it is intentionally removed. So that's what I'm going to be doing here. I'm going to be using the Arduino and the sensor to form some kind of a latching device whereby the LED will turn on when the sensor is triggered but will remain on until I press this switch here. So the setup is going to be wired here where we just connect an LED to Arduino Digital Pin 13 and this push button is going to be connected to Digital Pin 5. I will also put a 10 kilo ohm pull up resistor on this push button. Then the output pin of the sensor is going to be connected to Arduino Digital Pin 4. Let me now have a look at the kind of code that you are going to be using to run this setup. This is the code you are going to use for our setup. We begin by defining the pins where the sensor, the push button and the LED are connected to our Arduino. So the sensor is connected on our digital pin 4, the push button is on digital pin 5 and the LED is on pin 13. We also define variables to hold the values of the sensor and push button. In the setup, we declare the sensor and push button connections as inputs and the LED connection as an output and also use the digital write function to turn off the LED. Here in the loop section, we first read the values of the sense and the push button using the digital read function and then use these if statements to set the state of the sensor, LED and push button. When the sensor is triggered, it will read high and the LED will turn on. And when the push button is pressed, it will read low and the LED will turn off. Let me upload the code to the Arduino board and then we observe what is going to happen. I have now uploaded the code to the setup and now you see if I bring an object close up the sensor, it turns on, but the LED will remain on until I press the button, which is a bit different from last time. Last time it, the LED was going on for about 2 seconds and then goes off. But in this case, it turns on and when I press the button, it goes off. So that is the simple latching device. Let me now press the sensor with this other sensor with the light dependent resistor and we see how it's going to be working. Now let me bring any object close to the sensor. And as you can see, nothing is happening. Even if I bring it very close, nothing, nothing happens here. Now let's remove the light and then we see. I have now removed the light. It's now in total darkness. So now let me try to move any objects close to the sensor. As you can see, now the sensor turns on and remains on until I press the button and it goes off. Let me try again. Yeah, this is very practical for intruder detection, especially in dark places or at night. So that's the working of our RCWL0516 microwave radar sensor. Hope you've learned something new today. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also watch my other tutorials. Thanks for watching.